So again, buried deep in our house is the room I'm moving my new office into. And I'd like to make one of the walls in that office a solid surface of French cleats. Then I can use that wall to store the things that I use every day. So I started by making the French cleats that would go on the wall. And what I want to do is panelize that system so that I make a panel with the cleats on it. Then I can attach the panel to the wall. Now the, the largest section of panel goes over a vent and a outlet and a switch. So I need to cut the holes for that. So I cut a spot for the vent and I cut the outlet hole and then I'm cutting the hole for the light switch. And that panel is cut. Now I left it a little bit big to be able to hold it on the CNC. So once I had cut out the parts that I needed to on there, I could then trim the sheet down to its final size. Now the other panels are just simple panels. There's no holes or anything that needs to be cut out of them. So I laid out where the cleats would go. And I'm gonna do four inch spacing with a two inch cleat. So I'll have two inches of cleat and then two inches of space between the cleats. Now to make the cleats, I cut half inch plywood into strips and I cut them wide enough so that I could cut them down the middle with a 45 degree angle and get two cleats out of each strip. So doing it this way meant I could do all the vertical cuts at once then do all of the 45 degree cuts all at once instead of one vertical cut, one angled cut, one vertical cut, one angled cut, if I cut each strip separately. So now I just cut all the strips in half. And I should get an even pair if my cut's in the right place. <laughs> now to cut the cleats to length. Now the other way to do this was to cut the cleats out of a sheet that was already cut to the right length. But I did it this way where I just cut my four by eight sheet into strips. And then once it was made into strips, I could clamp all the cleats together and cut them to the right length. So it works either way. And I could lay them out. And I realized I wanted to sand the very edge of the cleat so it isn't quite so sharp. And it sort of cleans up that edge. Now I have them all laid out and I can start to glue them into place. Now I'm hoping just glue and nails will be enough to hold them in place. And I just followed my pencil marks on the, on the panel. There's a shorter section as well, so I did that too. Now that the panels are ready, I can install them on the wall. I started with the biggest one that had to line up with the, with the things on the wall. And I, I shimmed it up just a little bit on one side so it would be parallel with the door frame and wouldn't look crooked. <laughs> I think for these, I did a screw at each corner and then one in the middle at the top and the bottom. And that should be okay. Then the short side, I just did a screw at each corner. So there's a stud at the door frame, and there's a stud in the corner, and there's a stud at the other end of the wall. So all of these screws go through the frame, through the plaster, and into the studs. And that's what the panels look like on the wall. Now I'd like to make some things to hang on that system. So what I thought I'd make is a box that would hang on that. And within each box, I can keep similar items. <laughs> like I can have a box of computer bits and a box of camera stuff and a box of drawing implements, that kind of thing. One thing too, I've done shelves and boxes the traditional way without the CNC machine. So I thought I would do this one with that machine. And I also find I, I'll do part of a project with the CNC and then kind of cut the rest of it on the table saw. And I thought with this one, I'd try and just do all the parts on the CNC machine. And I think it there's a little more work cleaning stuff up and there's a little more waste in the wood, but your parts come out exactly the size that you need them. There's no fiddling around trying to figure out how wide to cut something. You just 
cut out all the parts and glue them together. Now I still detailed this box somewhat traditionally. I think there's a lot of joinery methods with the CNC that I didn't use. I just made a rabbit around the edge of the sides, then glued the front, the back, and the bottom into that rabbit to make the box and didn't do any, any tabs or clips or anything like that. And it needs a cleat on the back so it can be hung on the panel. And I made the cleats that go on the box a little narrower than the ones that are on the wall so that it'll fit between the cleats on the wall. So I've made, I made this box, this is kind of the first one, and I like how it looks and it, and it works really well. You can kind of put it wherever. But the, the handle I made doesn't make any sense because you can't hold the handle and put the box on the wall. So I find I grab it from the front, which is fine. So at first I was thinking maybe I'd do some kind of handle, you know, I'd like round over the edges on the, on the front here, whether that would help. But then the idea came up that may, maybe these are like little toolboxes. And I started to think of it like literally like a toolbox and it needs a little handle and maybe the handle is out over the box. So, th so this handle in the back kind of maybe stays, but maybe there's a handle that's over the box and you can, you can pull it off and then carry it like a little toolbox. So I cut out the pieces for the second box, which is now a, a which is now a toolbox. <laughs> So I cut the rabbit first, because I can't cut that once the pieces are cut out. Then I cut the holes in the pieces, because I can't cut those once the pieces are cut out. <laughs> and once all that was done, I could then cut out the pieces. Now on the front, I round it over the edge for your fingers to hold the front of the box. Then I could put this box together. And it was the same method where I do the front piece to the two sides. Then that gives me the front to push the bottom up against and get in the right place. Then I can do the back pushed up against the bottom and the two sides and it goes into the right place. So that the pieces fall into the places where they're, where they're supposed to be and line up perfectly. I need a handle and I had the closet rod from the closet in the office that I didn't need in the closet anymore. And I wanted to get the paint off of it. Now I did try doing this with the turning tools, but it ended up being quicker to do it with a sander. It was a little messier, but it was quicker. Really the one tricky part was getting the tailstock centered on the circle of the piece so that it wouldn't wobble. And I thought about turning a handle that had more of a handle shape but I decided I wanted just a cylinder as the, the box was really simple and having a, a simple box with then a more traditional looking handle on it would sort of look funny. So I just went with a, with a straight cylinder. And that just gets some glue and some nails to hold it in place. It should be fine. And I have a toolbox. And it needs a cleat on the back. So I'll put a cleat on the back, same way as the other one. And I can take it inside and see how it works. So I think this works really well. I really like how this turned out. Because the handle's right where you want it. You just grab it and it becomes a little toolbox that can then go somewhere to where you're, you're doing something. And then it can be stored on the shelf. And it also works where so they, they stack pretty well. I'm thinking for the next version <laughs> is to get rid of these holes and actually make the back a little heavier so that the balance is even more towards the back because I have the, the handle towards the back to open up the space in the front, 
I think having even a little more weight in the back would be good because then the weight of whatever's in here will be a little more balanced with it, I think. And I think my idea with the front, like with this one, I grabbed it on the front. So I was trying to make something for your fingers here. That's sort of not necessary anymore because of this handle. This handle becomes the handle that you use. I guess the one place where you grab it on the front, if you had one above it, it gets hard to get to the handle. So then it makes sense to, it does come off, it did. Well, maybe it doesn't even come off. So you're always just gonna do it with this handle. So I've, I've made three more of these, and I made them a little bit simpler without, without the holes in them. Um, and they, they actually balance about the same. <laughs> I don't know, they made a whole lot of difference. It does, does feel a little bit heavier. But what I thought is I would make these and then sort of stop and you use the ones I have and then as I settle into the office I'll, I'll figure out more what I need to make. I think, I think there could be versions that are longer, maybe a version where, where the handle's higher to, to fit taller things in. And I love suggestions if anyone has any thoughts on what else could be hung on the wall or, or variations to these um, would certainly be fun. <laughs> But um, they, they seem to work really well. <laughs> Thanks for watching.